beautiful line of the performance of every single stock in the S&P 500. What's going on, guys? As I'm recording this, the S&P 500 is down a whopping 23.55% year to date, which means we are in a recession. Uh, we've hit recessionary levels, which is below 20%. And this is just year to date. If we look at where the peak is, the peak was a little bit before uh, the start of the year. So we're actually down a little more than 23.5%. We're probably closer to 24% as I'm recording this. Now, we all know the S&P 500 is made up of the 500 biggest companies in America. But I wanted to know which company, well, I, I want to know every single company's performance within the S&P 500, maybe on a nice chart. And then I remembered, hold on, we could easily do that in Google Finance. So I put every single S&P 500 company in this table right here, figured out what the year-to-date change was on every single company, and then I was able to plot it on a chart like this. Now, I plotted this maybe a couple of days ago, so as prices go up and down, you can see it's not a perfect line. Um, and you'll see what I mean in a second. Let's just change that. Let's go A to Z. So now it's more up to date. And there you go, look at that beautiful line of the performance of every single stock in the S&P 500. You could see, you know, starting about here, that's probably, I'd say, between 75 and 80% of every S&P 500 company. 85% of the S&P 500 is at least in the negative. And this is probably, maybe it's even more, maybe it's 85, and then this is around 15%. 20 to, uh, 15 to 20% is in the positive. And you can see only one company is almost at 100% return for the year. But we have several, probably a dozen companies that are under by 50%. 50% of their market cap is gone. Uh, just to see Netflix, Etsy, Align, PayPal. Uh, you could just see this many right here. So yeah, that's what we got 20 minus three. So 17 companies, oh, 18, I forgot that one. 18 companies are underwater by at least 50%. And then if we scroll all the way down, yeah, uh, we can see a couple aren't showing for some reason, but only one is close to 100%, which is OXY, whichever company that is. Where's ExxonMobil? ExxonMobil's at 49%, uh, one of the better performing ones for this year, which is no surprise. And what's cool about this is, well, I, I also did it for the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones as well. So if we want to see those charts, let's just update it. So A to Z, and then we'll jump over to the Dow Jones and go A to Z. And don't worry, guys, I'm going to show you how to make this really quick too. But this is what the NASDAQ chart looks like. A lot uglier than the S&P 500. We got, oh, about, let's see, we, have, we could count here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 companies under 50%. And if you're asking what this red line is, which was also in the S&P 500 chart, that is where the S&P 500 currently is. So if we jump back over here, the S&P 500 is, at least in this, down 23%. I think it is a one-day uh, delay, so really it's like 24% right now. But you can see that red line is where the S&P 500 ETF sits at. And then here's all of the companies in the S&P 500, almost half of them are under that red line. And then you can see all of them above the red line. And I wanted to do that to really figure out in a market like this, are you better off investing in an ETF or trying to handpick stocks to beat the index? And I mean, it's it's kind of a 50-50. I mean, right about here, which is about 50% is under and 50% is above. So it's kind of a coin toss when you're looking at S&P 500 companies. So you could take that 50-50 shot or you just throw your money into the S&P 500 and ride the bear market. We look at the NASDAQ. 
you can see almost every single company is underwater. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten companies that are actually positive for the year. And VRTX at 14, almost 15%. But you can see the rest are really down. Uh, it looks like we got a decent chuck, probably 40%, under by 30%. And if we go to the Dow Jones, we can see we have six of them are actually positive for the year. And the rest are negative. And then we have almost half of them below what the actual ETF is trading at. So you can see the Dow Jones is at 17%. NASDAQ is 31, down 31%, almost 32 and then the s p 500 is down 23 percent as i'm recording this personally i expect everything to go down a little bit more uh i mean if i were to put a target on anything maybe the s p 500 could get down to 30 percent the nasdaq could get down to 40 percent and the dow jones maybe 25. that's just my guess not financial advice it could bounce from here or we could continue to go down another 50 percent who knows but it's a, you know, it's a fun experience for us all, uh, most of us experiencing our first bear market. But let's get into how do we make this because it's actually really simple. So I'm going to stick with uh, this sheet, but I'll, I'll open up a brand new sheet. And we're going to rename this S&P 502 because it's the second one that we're making. And what you need to start with is a list so you can see where did I get this list of companies so to do that go to something like Wikipedia and then you'll get a list of all the companies and you are going to want to copy everything so we're going to go all the way down to the bottom once you get all 500 companies you're going to hit control C then you're going to go up here and hit control shift V and that's going to post everything in. Now, there's a lot of stuff we don't need, like all of this. Maybe you want to keep uh, what industry they're in or stuff like that. So you could uh, you know, also mess around with that as well. But we're going to delete all that for uh, the video's sake. And the next thing we're going to need is price. And you know what? We could uh, put one above. So we could put up here, ticker. Then we're going to want price. And let me just use the one we already made for everything. All right, so I got number, company, symbol, price. I'm going to copy all of this. I'm going to go back over to our sheet. I'm going to paste that all in. Actually, we'll get rid of number, copy, paste. Okay, we're going to get rid of this. This The date didn't format over properly, but we're going to want the start of the year, which is one. The market opened on the 3rd for 2022. And uh, you know what? Let me delete that. We're actually going to want this over here. So this is company. This is ticker or symbol, whatever we want to name it. So now we could backtrack. So we could go to equals, Google Finance. We're going to want the ticker, comma, name. Put names in parentheses. So name close hit enter loading and then there we go and then we're just going to drop that all the way down so then all the names could load all right and then we want to jump over to price so we're going to do equals google finance and we're just going to click on the ticker and close that out and hit enter autofill great that gives us all the price market cap equals google finance grab the ticker again and then we're going to type in market cap, hit enter, autofill, great. And the reason why I wanted market cap is you could also mess around with things like, hey, does the market cap really matter? Like are bigger stocks uh, performing better than smaller stocks during this bear market and if we flip so this is going from well this is actually going from the smallest market cap all the way down to the biggest let's see if that makes any difference and we jump over to the chart you can see it really doesn't make a difference so it doesn't matter if you're going for the smaller market caps or these mega caps i mean you got a 50 50 shot here you can see that it's very random there's no kind of correlation with market cap but 
I mean, you could expand on it instead of market cap. Maybe you could look at the EPS and the PE ratio, uh, which I could get into, but I want to keep this video kind of short. I'm just going to show you how to set it up and then you can mess around with it. But let's jump back here. And what we're going to want is the start date. We need to know how the stock did the start of the year. And it's a pretty easy equation. So it's equals, we're going to want index. So equals index. And again, Google Finance. We're going to be pulling our ticker, comma, and then in parentheses, we want to type in open, close, uh, uh, not parentheses, quotations, close quotation, comma, and then we want to pull right up here. So E1, close that, then comma two, comma two, and then close that because we're indexing. So we need to pick from the index that we want. So that's why we're doing two comma two. Uh, and then go back to the E and in front of the E, we're gonna wanna put a dollar sign and then in front of the one, a dollar sign, hit enter. And then we're gonna wanna autofill. And again, a couple are gonna be uh, NA. I don't know why but maybe because you're trying to overload it with a whole bunch of different uh, you know, price points. And sometimes if you're experiencing too many error messages, try to mess around with the date up here. See how it kind of corrected some of it. Uh, but even the original one that I made had a couple that weren't working. I don't know why, but it is what it is. It's not perfect, but at least we could get most of the information. So now the change is an easy is an even easier equation. We're gonna do equals, and essentially we're gonna want the price minus what the price originally was, divided by the original price. Then we could close, whoops, we don't wanna close that. We could hit enter, hit that, and then we could select up here and do percentage. And then there we go. I mean, that's pretty much the hard part. That's the table. And if we highlight all of this and we go over to filter, that's how we can then filter it. So if we go up here and go A to Z, it's gonna go from, look, there we go, Netflix and Etsy right there. And then if we scroll all the way down, we'll show all the stocks. Again, there's, there's a lot of NAs for some reason. Uh, it wasn't as bad when I originally did it. Hopefully you don't get a lot of errors on your end, but it's just kind of an internal error. It's not that you're doing anything wrong. It's Google Sheets is just having a hard time pulling everything at once for some reason. Uh, and again, just mess around with the date and maybe you'll uh, be able to pull less errors that way. So it looks like I'm having trouble with one and three. Maybe we try two. And two seems to be a lot better. I only have a couple of errors. I think only two error messages. So that's good. We'll stick with that. That's A to Z. Actually, if we go Z to A, we can see how many error messages we have. So only two. That's even better than my original one. So I'll stick with that. Uh, but now we get to chart it. And that's pretty easy. So before we chart it, what I want to do is kind of put a column up above just like what I had in the last one. If we jump over to my old one, uh, I also want to pull the S&P 500 price. So it's pretty much the same thing. You're not going to get a market cap. You really don't need a market cap if we want that red line. Uh, but we're going to be taking the same thing that we did. We're taking the open date. And then the change is going to be the exact same thing. Uh, so if we jump back over here, we're going to get SPY. And we're gonna do equals Google Finance, SPY. We don't have to worry about market cap. So now we wanna pull where the S&P 500 was, uh, the open of the year. So I'm pretty much gonna copy this equation and put it up here. And we wanna change the B to an A because we're pulling from, whoops, not A. It is B, but it's B1, not B4. Then we're gonna hit enter. It's gonna load and we have a date and that's because we need to go here and we don't want a date. We want a price or we could just probably do automatic. There we go. 
476.30. Let's check my old one to make sure that's right. Yep, 476.30. And then we could do the exact same thing over here. So we're just going to copy this. We're going to paste it up here. And instead of four, we just need to change these all to one. So one, one, one. Hit enter. And there we go. We're down 23.02%. I don't know why the color changed, but we could change that back. But now that we have all of that, we could actually create the chart. So now what we want to do is go to insert chart and we're going to want a combo chart. You can see it's already trying to guess what I want, uh, but we're probably going to have to change some of this. So what we want our X axis to be is not price. So we want to remove that our X axis. We're going to want it to be the tickers. We're going to scroll all the way down to pull all of the tickers. And then for the series, we'll remove this. And what we want is the change. So now we're going to grab all of the change, hit OK. And if we scroll to the top, look at that. There it is. And now to add the S&P 500 line, there's probably a better way to do this, but this is how I do it. So I'm going to move it out of the way. I'm going to take this hit copy, hit paste, or actually no, I'm going to hit equals. I want it to equal that cell. Jump in here and we want dollar sign, dollar sign, hit OK. And we're just going to bring this all the way down as well, which I know isn't the cleanest way to do it, but it works. So then what we're going to do is go back to our chart and we want to add we want to add a column or add a series we're going to scroll all the way down and this is going to create that nice red line for us because it's just going to be all the same we're like 507 hit okay and we scroll up and then there we go there's that red line and we could delete that we could change this to s p 500 so s and P 500 hit enter you know you can center that and whatnot we don't have to get too creative there but now let me just kind of pull this over here I'll move over and then you can do what you want with it where you could make it bigger so you're able to see everything so you have a really big computer that'll make it easier you're not going to get all the tickers in but you really don't need all 500 tickers on the screen you kind of get the gist of it that way but that's pretty much it. That's how you create that. We'll just jump back to the one that I already had. So it's very easy to see what you have, see that, hey, would market cap make a difference? Can we find some kind of correlation with how stocks perform in an ETF? Are there some stocks that perform better than others? Or is it just going to be random no matter what? And also, I think it's really nice how I could see the change of everything, see how all the stocks are doing kind of in line with the S&P 500, how many are actually in the green compared to how many are in the red, and how many are doing worse than the actual ETF. But quick video, just wanted to show you guys how to do that. I think it's really cool to really dive into that. If you like this video, make sure to smash that like button. And guys, as always, I will see you in the next one.